Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with Jehovah's Fan TV. Back at you another video, man. Listen, here with my guy, Nevin. Uh, the Ravens on a bye week, so it's a perfect time to do a, a, a mid-season award show and a little bit of expectations going up for the rest of the year, man. So uh, I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to get it started off. And, uh, man, what's going on, Nevin, man? How, how, how you doing today, bro? I'm good, man. I, uh, I like that win against the Saints. Um, still a little upset with Marcus Peters about that. That was just, I don't even get how, how, how you did that. Like, I get if you think that he's out of bounds, but, yo, like, play through the whistle. But, I mean, overall, definitely, uh, definitely proud of that. So, hoping we can kind of use the momentum for the past few games to finish out this season. The schedule don't look too bad, so that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, we'll definitely get into the schedule. Uh, yeah, as far as the Saints game go, um, I feel like that was the first game the Ravens dominated from the opening kickoff to the end of the game. Um, so that was that was good to see. It was like that was like a full, really dominating kind of performance. I mean, you know, Marcus Peters don't give that up. We're talking about twenty-seven to six. You know, and that's the kind of game you want to see. Uh, all right, so look, let's let's get into the awards, man. We'll start. Uh, I'll start off. Offensive Player of the Season. Um, I think it can really only go with one guy, in my opinion. That's that's Lamar Jackson. He's still the engine of the team. He's still he's still what makes the offense go, in my opinion. So um, I gotta give it to eight. You know, the numbers have fallen off a little bit in terms of passing and things like that. But he's the MVP of this team, and uh, you know, he, he's the Ravens' best offensive player this season. Who, who you got? I have to agree with you on that. I mean, I was. You know, I was kind of leaning towards Devin Duvernay. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying that, like, he's, you know, that guy, but I'm impressed with him. And then, I'll be honest with you, Kenyon Drake, I was, I was, I'm feeling him a little bit with that, but I ain't going to give him the MVP. I'm going to still give it to Lamar because at the end of the day, defenses are scared of Lamar, whatever he does. Lamar might be, you know, kind of slow, whatever, but he's, you know, efficient in a lot of regards. Um, and I mean, he just gets the job done. I mean, now it's crazy because it in the past years it's looked like he was just trying to be a lot of razzle dazzle, a lot of fancy, and this and that. And I think that he's very like simplistic right now, and he's just like, look, let me just do what I gotta do to get the job done. I see him falling and sliding now. I ain't never thought I was gonna see that day in my life, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like he's forcing the forcing the ball. Got a couple that was floating around, whatever. But, I mean, I guess with it being him, um, you know, I, sadly, you know, that kind of thing happens. But all in all, um, definitely uh, Lamar with just his overall impact. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, like you said, like a good word has been a, a efficient, you know what I'm saying? So, obviously, there's some things in the past game that we want to see get cleaned up and get better. Uh, but I think that's a that's a team thing overall. I don't think that really just falls on Lamar Jackson, and um, he he's still the guy that makes defenses scare. Like you said, at the end of the day, bro. Um, so next thing is defensive player of the season. Um, Justin Houston's been so good that you almost, I almost want to give it to him right there, but he did miss three games, so it's like it's kind of hard. So and I feel like if Marcus Williams was healthy, he would have been in that mix because he was playing incredible. But we got I got a guy. Played all the games. He's back to an all-pro level. Uh, that's Marlon Humphrey. Uh, I think Marlon Humphrey's been the Ravens' overall best defensive player. Ravens fans gave him a lot of crap last year. You know, he was on Twitter congratulating guys after the getting law after losing the game, and Ravens fans was all in his mentions about it. Whatever. Can't say that about Marlon Humphrey this year. Nobody's gotten over him. They, we played the Bengals. Jamal Chase got, I think, one catch on him, and that was a tough ass catch on a, a, a sideline kind of fade. So. You know what I mean? So I, I got to give it to Marlon. My only thing Marlon needs to add to his game is the interceptions. He's just not an interception cornerback. If he ever gets to that point where he can catch interceptions, we're talking about a guy who will be known in the, around the league as a top five, top three kind of corner. But he doesn't give up catches like that. He doesn't give up touchdowns. It's got to be for me, Marlon Humphrey, defensive player of the season at this midway point. Who you got? My bad. Um, I hate constantly agreeing with you, but I do I do agree in the sense of not everybody else has been consistent. At that front seven, I just haven't seen that consistency. Justin Houston did, you know, really good last game, but 
again, like you said, missing games. Patrick Queen, I try. <laughs> I try. But it just had that hasn't been consistent. And I'm just like, okay, well, Marlon, not only is he consistent, he's quietly consistent. And I'm not seeing him trying to do too, too much. I mean, he's uh, not punching the ball out like I wish he would because I love seeing that. He's on his peanut Tillman a couple years ago. But, you know, he's – you can definitely feel like he's still the leader of that team. And he's holding that secondary down and he's trying his best. I mean, they've had their, fault, their uh, faults and their flaws, but – um I'm a big fan this year. I wish I could say that about Marcus Peters. That was that's my boy. You know, he's gotten burnt here and there. It's just really that last game that just I don't know what it is. It's just that play. I don't know why it irritated me so much. It was just so like pee wee football. Like you just let him go. <laughs> but I'm done talking about it. That's just my take on it. But yeah, um, I agree with you on that, Marlon Humphrey. I just think it was a little lackadaisical by Peters. Um, but Peters then had a couple plays. Like, over the last couple of weeks, you know, he's been picking up some defensive pass interference in a couple key moments, and then, you know, he got this play. So it's like, I'm not saying Marcus Peters is slipping, you know what I'm saying? But it's just something to watch out for. He's still a really good player, but, you know, it's just something to watch out for. Uh, but, yeah, man, with Marlon, um, I do wish he was punching the ball out more. But he hasn't been in the slot as much as I thought he would be. I mean, they're moving him around. He's playing slot outside, things like that. But so I think when he was in the slot, he got more opportunity to do that. But you know, they're, they're kind of moving him around and use him as a chess piece. So that's cool. I was really hoping a guy, honestly, coming into the season, if, I, if you had to say, Gabriel, who was one player you was hoping would be the defensive player of the season at this midpoint? I was really hoping it was a Dafi Owe. I, I, I was. That's the guy I was like. I, I really hope it is him. Um, Seriously, bro, I really, I really did want it to be him, man. Hey, bro, it you have to happen. Um, every single, every single thing on here, you have mentioned him at least. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, so defensive play. I mean, Odafi Owe, man. I mean, you know, this might be his week. <laughs> but I, I agree with you, though, man. Like, yeah, my bad for cutting you off. I just had to point that out. That it's been an every week thing. <laughs> That's funny to me. Yeah, I, I I say this. I mean, he, he he does get held a lot. They don't call it. I don't know if it's just because he looked big and strong as hell, so they the referees just let it go. I don't I don't know. But anyway, um, so hopefully he gets to pick it up. You know, uh, he should have more than one sack just because the pressure numbers he's getting are are good. So the sacks will come. Anyway, all right. So now breakout player of the season, uh, both sides of the ball. Uh, we can start with offensive side of the ball. Um. For me, uh, it's, it's Devin DuVernay. Uh, I, I don't really know how it could be another Ravens player as far as a breakout candidate goes. But, you know, I wish he was used more. I mean, the first two years he was, you know, Ravens had us convinced he could only do jet sweeps. You know, that's that's all I thought he could do, jet sweeps and running back kick returns and pump returns. But now we're seeing that he's an actual receiver and he's an actual threat with the ball in his hands, you know. Um I know a lot of Ravens fans hate hearing the comparison to Debo Samuel. I'm not calling him Debo, but he they have similar roles where it's not about their great route runners as receivers or anything like that. It's about that you get the ball in their hands, they make a play, right? You got to find a way to get those kind of guys the ball. And uh, Devin DuVernay has shocked me this year with high pointing the ball, going up on top of DB's heads. We saw it a couple times this year. Um, and just being explosive in the passing game. So I got to give it Devin DuVernay. That's my offensive breakout player of the year so far. I agree with you 100%, um, but in the spirit of trying my best not to agree with you this entire uh, episode, um, weirdly enough, I feel like Kenyon Drake is holding it down. I mean, when you have, yet again, um, running backs decimated, you know, I mean, not like, you know, seriously long term, but um, when you have that being the case and you got somebody that's getting his at least five yards, like every time I turn around, you know, especially last game, he was breaking. He was breaking quite a few of them. And, you know, it doesn't seem like there's too much of a step back from the running game that we would have. Um, of course, it's not going to be the same if you don't got Gus Edwards and uh, J.K., but um, I, I appreciate the fact how he's holding it down. Of course, Devin DuVernay is holding it down in the wide receiver room, like in every regard um, whatsoever. But, um, yeah, there's somebody else that I see who's um, who I didn't expect to be doing what he's doing this season, at least, you know, this far. Um, especially with the circumstances. So, so that's here. 
I think that's more than fair, man. Uh, Kenyon and Drake gets the. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I'm gonna start calling it the Devontae Freeman Award for a player that was terrible the first three, four weeks of the season, and then turns up and ends up being a really good player. That 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 might be what I call it going forward. So yeah, Kenyon Drake definitely gets the Devontae, the Devontae Freeman Award because. Uh, um, I, I was saying he was done. He was showing why he was cut by the Raiders. And then, you know, he's he's been the best running back this season so far. Obviously, Gus only had, you know, two games. But when Gus played, Gus looked really good. Even J.K. when he played, looked really good. But, you know, injuries and things like that. But Kenyon Drake has really held it down. You know, we, they haven't had to go to Mike Davis. So, shout out to Kenyon Drake. He definitely deserves a mention for sure. Um, so, as far as the defensive side of the ball, I feel like we may have different players here, right? So... I think for defense, right, breakout player, I want to say Patrick Queen, but it's been a little up and down. He's been really good this year, better than uh, previous years, and he's coming on strong. But I got to give it to Justin Matabike. Um, you know, Justin Matabike, we call him um, <laughs> we call him African Aaron Donald, you know what I mean? They, they train together in the offseason and things like that. You know, he's a guy that where, you know, a smaller three-tech defensive lineman, but he gets the pressures, he gets the run stops. And this year, he's taken the leap. You know, we've been talking about Dustin Manabiki's potential for the last two years. Now, that potential, we've seen it on the field. It's no longer just, oh, he could be a good player. He is a good player. So, I'm going to get my breakout play on defense with Dustin Manabiki, and um, hopefully he continues that throughout the rest of the season. Who you got? Now, you're right about Patrick Queen being inconsistent, but that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I, you know how I am about Patrick Queen and uh, Justice Hill. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, when Patrick Queen is good, he's good. When he's, you know, not, I mean, it's the almost interceptions, it's the almost sacks, it's the almost tackles that just come about. Um, but I see the upside, you know, with the, the, with the rest of the season, and again with our schedule kind of being what it is, I think that he's gonna have his opportunities to shine and. I mean, hopefully, because I hate being wrong about it. You know, I, I keep predicting that he's going to do well. Um, that's how you are with Owe. <laughs> but that's 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 who I I see his breakout um, and not – and we're able to see his potential. He just hasn't fully lived up to it yet. But I'll see him as a breakout right now, but a really breakout like the rest of the season. So. Hey, listen, Patrick Crean is more than worth the shout out. Honestly, I'm I'm glad he's even mentioned because, you know, for, he first couple of weeks it looked like that wasn't gonna happen. But, you know, he turned it up, especially that that Bengals game is like that that set his season on fire, that 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 first Bengals game on Sunday night. So uh that was good to see there, man. Um so listen, um we haven't had a chance to talk since well, at least talk on here, and then obviously we talked off, off offline and everything like that. But um going through the rest of the season, man. Uh, first, I want to start off. How do you feel about the Ravens trade for Rokon Smith? And how do you feel about his first performance versus the uh, New Orleans Saints? Love the move. I think, well, how many tackles? He had five tackles, something like that. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong. Five. Yeah, man. Love how he jumped right in there. I think once we get him up to speed, and I believe he was saying, you know, with the, uh, the bye week, he's able to kind of, you know, get a little bit more acclimated. I love it. I'm I just now I just want to see what this ends up looking like. I I feel like he's gonna bring a different energy to the defense. I think we definitely had some uh lack of confidence in the defense. I think coaching staff felt that there was a lack of confidence and even the players. I see I saw that coming around, but once we got that move, I think that night like, I think it's really about to turn up and I think our defense is about to be, you know living up to the potential that we thought they would be at. I mean, in spite of the injuries that we have here and there, I think that they're about to, you know, and adding Roquan was, was a was a big move. Um, so, again, I love it. I want to see what it does, but he jumped in and he just got right to business. Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, real quick about Roquan in that first game. Obviously, I'll talk about it before. Obviously, I love the move. Um, but that game versus the Saints was pretty much like almost everything I wanted to see right away. Like, we haven't had a linebacker in a while where it's like he comes downhill and when he hits the person, they on the ground. It's, it's no, they might slip out, things like that. I mean, he stuffed Alvin Camaro back-to-back -back plays, made the Saints uh, punt the football. 
Then Alvin, later in the game, Alvin Kamara comes up the backfield, and he's hip to hip with Alvin Kamara. Like, linebackers don't cover Alvin Kamara easily. So just to see that, I was like, beautiful, bro. Like, everything that he did in Chicago, he brought it here right away. And he seemed like a leader, too. That's, that's the biggest thing. So um, I think eventually, maybe not this season, maybe later on in the season, you know, he will be the guy that's calling the plays in the middle. But obviously, right now, it's still Chuck Clark. I got no problem with that. But I think eventually Roquan will take over that kind of role. You know what I mean? So, um, but look, so the Ravens have played nine games, six and three, two and zero in the division. Four of the last, uh, four of the Ravens' last eight games are in the division. So, you know, a lot, two left versus Steelers, one versus the Bengals, one versus the Browns. Um, so basically what I'm asking is eight games left. What do you feel like that Ravens record should be in the last eight games? I'll write off the opponents real quick. So, you know, I've said the division game, so you know it's four of those. So the other four games are Panthers, Jags, Broncos, uh, Falcons. So well, what do we feel like the Ravens record should be in these last eight games? I'll be fourth, right? We got those games. <laughs> um, and I got family in Jacksonville, too. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> but we got those. I always, when it comes to divisional games, I always um, factor in that we might lose two of them. Maybe three. No matter what, no matter what the Steelers look like, when they come to play us, they show up. Um, so I say that we'll drop two of those. I'm thinking that we really could get to a, a 12 and five. I think 12 and five is, is realistic. Um, maybe 12 and six, you know, I've, I don't want to put in the universe that we might lose three divisional games, but I'll say, I'll say 12 and five for the sake of not, uh, not jinxing us. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the same wave of uh, so what's that six and two in the last eight games? I mean, freaking uh, T.J. Watt is back. You know, unfortunately, we couldn't play the Steelers when they didn't have T.J. Watt, so he's back. He always gives the, he gives everybody headaches, but he always gives the Ravens headaches. Um, really good player, bro. So that's like I can see the Ravens dropping one against the Steelers. Like, like, like we said, we know, oh, so they got Kenny Pickett. They got Mr. Trubisky. I don't care. It's the Steelers. I really don't care, bro. Like, they, they, they're going to find a way to make it a game. Um, but so f- forget about the division, right? So out of the Panthers, Jags, Broncos, and Falcons, we know the Ravens sometimes play down to the competition. Do we see any of those games being trap games or we just think, nah, that's 4-0, they're going to they gonna handle their they business? No, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we play down to play down to it. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say like every game is going to be a complete blowout. I think the Jags, I like Trevor Lawrence. I definitely like Trevor Lawrence. I think he got, you know, short end of the stick for having Urban Meyer. Um, I think anyone would have the short end of the stick for having Urban Meyer in the NFL. <laughs> um, but I do think we're going to have a couple close ones, but I do think that we're going to come out and we're going we're gonna to win it. And I am hoping that in the close ones that we may have, that we don't see too many problems, you know, like we saw in the games where we were just, you know, blowing teams out and just letting everybody come back. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going, we're going to win those. I don't, I don't see too, too many uh, issues with that. No, I feel you. So I think for me, when we're talking about out of the, out of the uh, division games, excuse me. So those four other games, I think the only game where I say like the Ravens be careful is is the Broncos coming here, right? Everybody's ragging on Russell Wilson. Everybody's loving. He's the butt of everybody's jokes, whatever. And he walks into it a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say he doesn't. You know, Russell Wilson does. He brings a lot of it on himself. But they still got Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hambler. They got this rookie tight end, Dublich, who's who's really impressive so far. Now they, now, they did trade away Bradley Chubb on defense. They did. But they still got Patrick Sertan, Justin Sim. Like, like they got names. Like, they got guys you know. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I just don't want the Ravens to be at home and sleep on that game versus the Broncos. Russell Wilson is still an elite quarterback. You know, he hasn't been up to that full potential this year. But if I look at the schedule outside of just talking about the division, though, that's the game I'm like, Ravens, handle your business that game for sure. Um, so, all right, one more thing before we get out of here, man. You know, we, we, hey, real quick, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> if Mr. Sierra 
does high knees <laughs> in the middle of the aisle on a plane, we might have an issue. That's the only thing that I see that we may or may not be like, uh, I don't know, like Russ came to play just a little bit. But, you know, like you're saying, there, there are names, but, you know, like, I mean, the things have to run through Russ. So I'm hoping that there are no high knees and that he's not playing one, two step in his headphones as he's warming up. Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson, man. Uh, so uh, before we get out of here, one one more thing that um, I actually forgot to mention this before we even went into this part. Give me your biggest surprise. Oh, you already you, you finished, the, finished the glass, huh? <laughs> so give me give me your biggest surprise of this season so far. I, I'll go first. I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, I want to say that my biggest surprise so far is how well Michael McDonald has adjusted um, cause coming off, you know, early season, it was, it was some struggles. It really was, but he's really adjusted game by game for me to, for just, to be such a young defensive coordinator and to have, be able to make mid in game adjustments on the fly. is really impressive. That's the one thing that we say about Greg Roman. Like, where's the adjustments at? Where's the adjustments at? Right. I think we saw some of Greg Roman this year, Tampa Bay game and things like that, whatever, but just in the past. So I think for me, Mike McDonald being a really impressive first year defensive coordinator, obviously they have a lot of talent on defense, so that helps as well. But he's making, he makes some good adjustments out there. So I got to give him credit. So Mike McDonald being as good as he's been year one, I think has been my biggest surprise. And I agree, but only partially. I think just overall is the team making that turnaround. I was nervous. I was I was very nervous. Like you don't just drop leads like that. And you know, I understand Tyreek Hill is having a historic season right now. And I get and even with that game, I was like, all right, he kind of moving slow right now. He gonna turn up. And he turned up. But I think that overall as a team that, you know, we turned it around. Like the offense doesn't didn't seem as shaky or hasn't seemed as shaky as of late when we get the lead. Defense has been holding it together, except for Marcus Peters that play. Um, but, <laughs> but I think that um, I think it's a it's an overall thing. It's an overall team thing. When I see you know that that turnaround, I'm just hoping that you know that momentum continues and we keep having that um, you know that that kind of consistency. But yeah, like you said, the defense I see the bigger picture right now, and I'm hoping that coaching stays this way you know i've been calling for hardball's head for a few years and i also you know i'm always skeptical about you know what our coordinators are doing greg roman in particular we're gonna leave it where it's at though um but but yeah so we're, we're, we're doing all right you know considering uh what, where we were initially all right man so i think we're gonna wrap it up there you know we gave the ravens best season awards we gave a little bit of a second half of the season preview. Um, so never well, I'll give you one more thing. You want any you got any last thoughts before we get out of here? Or are you good, man? Let, let, let me know. Ravens to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Remember, I said it. That's my hot take of the week. Um, that's, that's definitely my hot take of the week. Though realistic, I'm uh I'm I'm there for it. We we know obviously we we're gonna get to the playoffs. We definitely gonna get there, but I think that again. Make the adjustments, keep those adjustments consistent when it comes to, you know, what's going on uh, in the game and use the eye test when it comes to that, uh, when it comes to what needs to be adjusted. I think we're going we gonna to have a good, uh, a good run. Ravens country, let's ride. <laughs> that, that, that feels like a jinx. That feels like a bad omen right there. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I just did a video about, you know, can the Ravens style of offense um, lead you to a Super Bowl? Right now, the Ravens average 187 yards passing a game. That's, 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 that's too low. They got to get to up to over 20 yards a game passing at the bare minimum. Um, and the passing game just got to get in the rhythm. That's, that's my biggest thing. The Ravens have all the talent to make it to the Super Bowl. Um, they just got to have the answers. If the running game is getting shut down, is this passing game going to be well old enough to really – you know, propel forward because the guys are here. I think the talent is here. So Lamar is good. The receivers, I'm not going to say the receivers are top shelf. They're not, but they're good enough. And, you know, it's just about can the scheme get the guys open. That's it. So, um, but yeah, man, that, that's our thoughts for the Ravens. Miss season award, second half uh, of the season preview. Give your thoughts in the comments. Drop your awards in the comments, man. It's uh, Gabriel, it's Navin, it's just another fan TV. We out.